The Low Car Car Show sticks it out in Columbus, Ohio for part two of A Good Guy's Double Dose. jealous of that paid job. I've owned the car for 30 years. It's outside of my family, it's my everything. That's just me. I mean, I've, I've had this, I've been a gearhead since I was 12 years old. And this, this is my pride and joy. I, and I drive it everywhere. The car's been on a trailer twice since I've owned it. And that's because it was broke. It, uh, it's got 150,000 miles on it. It's a 350, 350. Corvette suspension, leather interior, just a good old driver car. Burl Murdoch from Zebulon Custom Finishes in Frankfort, Indiana. He stripped the car, put it in primer, and he was ready to put a different paint job on it totally. And he called me up and he says, I'm an artist. He says, would you let me do something different with your car? And I says, I don't know, man. I said, I've seen some other artists. And I said, I'm not willing to just give you carte blanche do what you want to. And he says, no, no, no. He says, I want you to tell me what you want on the car. He says, but I don't want to do a conventional paint job. And I says, well, I've always wanted a Woody. I said, you, could you paint it to look like a Woody? And this kid was so young, he says, I don't know what the hell a Woody is. So I had to take him a model and show him. He says, oh, yeah, I can do that. So he did some artist renderings of what he thought he was going to do. And he says, could you live with that? And I said, absolutely. He said, well, it's going to cost you a few more bucks because of the labor-intensive time to paint it, said, whatever. And he had the car for eight months. I saw it in progress, but it got to a certain point, and he told me, no, you can't see it anymore. He says, I don't want you to see it till it, it's done. So I went for two months not knowing what my car looked like or what it was going to come out as because he was very secretive. He says, you'll be happy, he says, but I just don't want you to, to see it till I give you the keys back. And when he did, yeah, I was, I was totally blown away, impressed with what he had done. And I've never regretted it for a minute. I'm very happy with the results. Uh, it's an eye catcher. It's a one of a kind, unique car that you'll never see another one, another sedan delivery that looks like this, at least not to my knowledge. This classic gets its kicks on a well-known road. Happened to find this on eBay. So I, it was like, boy, I had, had a friend who had one. And I love the body lines. I absolutely love the body style of this car. So I went ahead and bought the car and had it for nine years now. This was a base Javelin, so it only has a 304, 727 automatic, has the AMC differential in it. It originally was automatic on the column, but it's got the factory horseshoe fuller shifter in it now. This is Chrysler Patriot Blue. Those are billet specialty wheels, 15 by eights, all the way around. Do a little auto crossing here at Good Guys with it, and at some of the other Good Guys events. So I needed some little stickier, and it's got big sway bars on it, and quick ratio steering in it as well. Four wheel disc brakes that I put on. They're no fun if you don't drive them. Uh, we, we've been, we're Route 66 roadies. This car's been on, hopefully we'll finish the rest of Route 66 next year, but we generally drive it probably 3,000 miles a year, maybe, two to 3,000. Oh, it drives like a modern car. An old sedan undergoes a total transformation. It was a two-door sedan, we made it into a 35 Woody. Bought it down the road about an hour from where I used to live. I had the idea of doing a tin Woody. All well, this product on here is painted. It's an all-steel car, there's no fiberglass. The sedan's never had a back door, so we put folding door that folds down, and one that folds up, and then we put all the intations into the wood, and a lot of the Woodies always have the lighter color, and I wanted to do something dark, so we, we did all the wood in dark. We kind of went with the older wood where we had the little wormholes and that type of thing. We got a Roush 351, board to 408, uh, dynoed out about 435 horse, backed up by an automatic with a 9 inch posi track rear end. One off wheels uh, that we had built and uh, Greenings out of Louisiana built the wheels for us. It probably took us a little bit, that was probably our longest project was getting them wheels drawn out. 
The, the car was lengthened three inches. It was wedged two and a half. That's where you cut it from the front to the back. Uh, the doors were built back of the car. The hood sides, we, we built different hood sides. We lengthened the fenders. The hood was plant pancaked an inch and a half. We de detailed a whole bunch of stuff underneath. And then we went with the old traditional cloth top that they had back in that day. Instead of a lot of the guys nowadays, they fill them up with steel and then they paint them. We just wanted to keep that kind of old look to it. Coming up, a mistake becomes a blessing. The Low Car Car Show is being brought to you by Low Car Performance Products, quality, plain and simple. And by ARP, the world leader in fastener technology. And by Steel Rubber Products, quality crafted rubber parts and weather stripping. and by Flowmaster, the exhaust technology company. This Buick's best feature came by total accident. I've owned this car four years. I bought it out of Saxonburg, Pennsylvania, off of Craigslist. It was pretty much the way you see it. Made some modifications, but it was a lead sled. It was blue in color, and I did change the color of the blue. It's a Sherwin-Williams Planet color. I can't tell you the exact name of the color, but uh, it's a Sherwin-Williams product. The grill is from a 1955 Oldsmobile. Tail lights are from a 1954 Chevrolet. Well, the skirts were actually part of the vehicle when it was new. I have twin, what we call dummy spot. They're just mounted to the outside of the windshield. They're not uh, functional. Top is a Carson top. When the car was being painted, they were putting the stainless steel back on the car, and they accidentally broke a drill bit and scratched the side of the vehicle. So they called me, and they told me they were going to have to repaint the entire rear quarter. When I drove out to the shop, the pinstriper had gone online and picked up a, the Buick logo, made a stencil, and they repaired the little scratch, put the Buick logo on each side of the car, and then tied it in with a very fine pinstripe. So by accident, that is the one part of the car that people ask me more about than anything, actually. It was, it was all accidental. This Oldsmobile is a real survivor. I bought the car just the way you see it. I bought it out of in Hagerstown, Indiana, 15 years ago. It's called persimmon. Over the top persimmon is a gold pearl. So in the daylight, you can see the gold, the gold shine over the persimmon. The grill is actually a 51 Oldsmobile floating grill. It's out of the actual Oldsmobile front end, but just all everything removed and putting it in there as a floater. The bumper is a 1952 Buick bumper, and the headlights are 1953 Buick. The taillights are of a 1954 Mercury. They are doubled up lenses and then turned upside down to get the angle of going out. The top is chopped four and a half inches, and it's done, it's a padded hard top that's done in the gay lowered top style to make it look like it's a convertible top. The thing about this car, it has a zip out rear window and then I can lay it down to make it look just like a convertible. Interior is all hand done. Uh, it has the Thunderbird rear seat with the wraparound rear seat. It's got dual 60-40 seats in the front. Power everything. The hubcaps are actually Oldsmobile hubcaps with just a bullet put into the center. The chrome on the car is actually stock chrome. It's just altered to a different size. It was longer in the front on the original and shorter in the rear. But they just redesigned it and made it fit to make it look in this pattern. I have a Chevy 350 engine in this. It has tri-power, and it has a Saginaw 4-speed transmission. Other than this chopped 4 inches, uh, every body panel on this has been contoured, other than the doors and the trunk lid, but everything else has been recontoured to full custom. I drive it everywhere. I put on at least 1,500 miles on it a year. Need some extra convenience or added security? Look no farther. Hi, I am Jason with Keyless Remotes. We offer MGP caliper covers and factory OEM key fobs. We do models anywhere from like 92 to date. 
I can provide you with a kit to install the electric door locks, actuators, and the keyless entry module. Yeah. That would give you the keyless entry system. We have them for uh, Fords, Mustangs, of course, lots of GM products, pickups. Uh, the Camaro, Corvettes, the Cruze, Sonic Cruze, we can custom make them as well. Any color you would like, uh, custom color match is the colors that are on your vehicles. Uh, just need the paint code to color match and the paint name. I can provide uh, instructions for most models and makes, uh, domestic or import. All your average cost is gonna run you anywhere from $20, $25 to $100, $125. It's very important to have a keyless remote on your vehicle. It provides security for your parking lots when you're coming out of, like through, say, a grocery store. You have a remote in your hand and somebody tries to grab your purse if you're a woman or a man. You can hit your panic button on your remote that will draw attention to that particular spot area. You can use a keyless remote for uh, security at your home. You can leave the remote on your bed stand at night when you go to bed. You hear somebody break into your house or coming into your home. You can hit again, you can hit the panic button on the remote. That will sound off the alarm, the horn on your uh, car, which will again draw attention to that particular zone. Coming up, a father and son gearhead duo. A Ford Galaxy takes its owner back to the past. We found it in Ohio at a car show. And the reason why we actually picked this car is because this was our daily driver when I was a young kid. It's a clone, it's a tribute, however you want to say. It's painted the same, it's got the same grill in the car. It's done exactly the way my dad had the car. The grill is a 59 Chrysler Imperial, and my dad had installed it in a car that he had back in the mid-60s, and when he got rid of the car in the late 70s, somehow he conned the guy he took it out of the car, put it in the rafters of the garage, and then it laid there for about 40 years. It's lowered. The motor's been rebuilt, refreshed. It's 289. It's got a brand new paint job. It's 1966 Cadillac Gold. The interior's been redone. It's exactly the way my dad had it. It was black interior. It's got 62 Ford side trim on it. Nose deck, shaved, and skirts. With all that work to do, how did they get around to their other car? 51 Merc. The hood shaved, rounded hood, French headlights, custom grill. Uh, all the seams have been filled. Door handles are off. There's a uh, 51 Buick tail lights in it. We made it out of two pieces of 47 Olds bottom piece trim on a, in the grill. Put one this way and one the opposite way. And these are spotlights. And the uh, middle is from a hardware store. It's a rolled and plated. And it's uh, oyster and some kind of like green. It's stock, stock dash. There, late model Riviera with a bullet in the center. And it's lowered by uh, drop spindles in the front and D-arch springs and blocks in the back. The 350 Chevy with the 350 transmission and a Camaro rear end. He bought this car in 1972. It was wrecked. He brought it home. In the meantime, we still had this car. So this was his daily driver and this is what we drove. This thing sat for almost 30 years before we tackled this job. So it wasn't like, why didn't he do, do this one first? We had this at the same time. And then when this went, we got around to doing this, that's what happened. This Ford's greatest asset is plain for all to see. It's a 53 Mercury, it's board 40 over, mild cam. It's stroked, dual carburetors, headers, uh, high compression heads, dual exhaust. I have an electric fuel pump. <laughs> Everything else is old. 
I have a 39 Ford transmission. Culver City, quick change rear end. Torque tube drive shaft. It's, it's all the old technology. These are uh, reproduction Firestone from Coker, bias ply. 40 Ford wheels. Slightly wider wheels on the back from a truck. Right now I'm running a stock 378 so I can drive it on the highway. It's original frame, steel grill shell, it is a fiberglass body. I built everything myself, it's been a seven year build. I painted it, did all the upholstery other than the seats. And of course I have all the support of my friends and family. It's been a childhood dream since I was young and I loved the nostalgia since I was a kid, even when it wasn't popular. So uh, I, to me, it's a classic hot rod, and I always wanted the classic hot rod, including the flathead. Not bad for a buggy sprung car. It really is. You hit a series of bumps, you bounce a bit, and I have Model A seats, and I have a lot of cushion to it. So that helps. But uh, it's surprised me for a short wheelbase and the type of suspension. It uh, rides well. It also has uh, vintage English shock absorbers, which are a little unusual. But that helps as well. Coming up, a vintage SoCal treasure. The Low Car Car Show has been brought to you by Low Car Performance Products. Quality, plain and simple. And by B&M Racing and Performance, quality performance products that work. And by Borla, the world's most winning exhaust. And by Hearst, America's number one shifter. We're back in Columbus where kids can find their favorite cars in miniature. This SoCal treasure is no desert mirage. Found out of Southern California. It sat in the desert for 30 years. 57 Chevy four-door wagon. My husband is a car builder, so he built the car for me. So what made her choose this Chevy? I'm from that era, and I like the family type of cars, and just, <laughs> I like 57 Chevys. That's a ZZ4 engine with a Griffin radiator and a four-barrel carburetor. The wheels on that old girl are 20s and 18s. That pretty shade of orange is called Sunset Pearl. Where did that car get that flowery interior? Oh, it was a theme from the California. I want to continue with the surfboard and the flowers and the leather interior because it's a theme from Southern California. So why does it have those antique plates? Because it came from California, and it's original plates from 1964, and that was the last time it was driven. This week's low car lowdown, we want to make sure that we can check out what's going on in the engine, all of our fluid levels, do it in style, Brian. We've got it in style. We've got some, some things that we've been working on that, are, that have really changed the way things are going right now. It's, we've always had our standard dipsticks, which are, you know, we've, we've changed to an inner wire now that's a, a stainless inner wire with a, a lug on the end of it. We've put that in our engine oil dipsticks as well as our transmission dipsticks. But we've also come another step further with the locking. We have uh, the locking mechanism works much like an air chuck would. You pull back on the ring, and the piece comes out. 
It, they're really nice, they'll hold vacuum if you've got a problem with the vacuum. It'll also keep it from blowing out if you're running, say, a supercharged car or something that's got a lot of engine, engine pressure. And then when you, you get in, go from our engine ones into our transmission, the first one I want to point out here is, Brian, something that, that low car has, and only low car has, and, and that is, this is real black braided. This isn't something that's over the top or anything else. I mean, this is just really cool. No, it's, it's a really cool process. It's a process that took us nine months of R&D to developing it to work right. So we have to give lifetime warranty on everything, and we're proud to do that, so it had to last. It couldn't be something that gasoline would wipe off or racing fluid or trans fluid would wipe off. And we incorporated that into all of our, our throttle cables, our kick down cables. We've got it into all of our dipsticks as well, as you can see by this piece here. But uh, we've got everything from our standard tried and true firewall mount uh, dipsticks for the transmissions. There again, we've changed uh, the inner wire where you've got a nice big lug on those. And uh, we've got our locking transmission dipsticks, which was uh, developed from Skip Walls with his drag racing. And we've been able to, to utilize that and do such a good thing with those. Those are, they do a great job. And more than one way for NHRA racers, you have to still run a locking dipstick. But what's nice about ours and one of the feature function, functions of ours is the fact that you can also take the bottom loose. If you've got to take the, the motor out of the car, if it's a door car and it's hard to get to, you can just drop it right out of the bottom of the car. Absolutely. This bolts in, it keeps it from blowing out, keeps everything sealed. And, you know, if you're running like a dragster or whatever, which we, we don't have those out in front of us right now, all different kinds of color choices and the ones where if you have your spare training, just put your cap on, just take it back in and out. I mean, it really is nice and convenient and keeps everything clean keeps the fluid in the tranny where we want it to be. You can find the entire line, and there's lots to choose from with Low Car. Quality, plain and simple, made in the USA. It's all on their website at lowcar.com. That's all for part two of Good Guys in Columbus, Ohio. Next time, Low Car Car Show takes you upstate New York for the Syracuse Nationals.